Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on the role of self-limiting beliefs, both as it relates to a narcissist and their cognition pattern, their thought pattern, their self-beliefs, as well as those of the victim, the supply, the target, the individual who has been exploited, lied to, mistreated, abused, um, not received the whole truth from a narcissistic individual. And essentially, they have come to the conclusion, or perhaps you who are watching right now, have come to the conclusion that the individual who you were either in a family with, a business with, in a relationship, perhaps maybe you were even being wed, um, this was your fiance, you were wed to be married, and you realize that it was really quite a bit of an illusion. In other words, um, things didn't pan out. Things aren't working out. Uh, there's a big disparity of energy and balance in the relationship. Um, there's a power vacuum, if you will. This person always needs to be the one in control, the one with the power, the one with the attention, the one with the limelight. Everybody has to be dancing circles around this individual and their feelings. And then furthermore, Everyone really has to kind of be like a, a puppeteer or puppets to this individual who works or who strives to work as a puppeteer, controlling the behaviors, thoughts, emotions, and really oftentimes the self-esteem of those people who are around them. And the narcissist, the borderline, and the psychopath, really um, many individuals, and we're going to kind of... Um, blend the lines here of, um, you know, character disordered individuals, but these types of individuals and how they present in your life tend to crave and have an insatiable need to have power and control over others. And oftentimes this is achieved by making others feel less than, um, through a lot of the blame shifting, the name calling, um, talking about you behind your back, putting on an image in a veneer of perfection, um, of being the best, the one who's deserving of the attention. They might pull out, you know, just the, um, you know, the golden child card or the poor me card or whatever it is that needs to keep them at the center, you know, basically of everything that tends to um, revolve around them. And so oftentimes there's an issue, not only with these types of individuals, but then um, inherently then um, deflected upon those individuals who are victimized by them with regards to their self-limiting beliefs. And the erroneous uh, thought pattern, which I want you to identify here with a character disordered individual, is that they will oftentimes secure their power and their control over others by controlling of their emotions, their attention, their energy, what you focus on, how you feel around them. This is ultimately given up to this individual um, by either unconsciously, you know, unbeknownst to you, basically kind of going on underneath the surface or underneath your conscious awareness, not readily apparent to you, but they are achieving this stance, this uh, position in the dynamic of the relationship, the family, the workplace, etc., through giving you erroneous messages, which have nothing to do with you. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, a bad employee, a bad wife, a bad sister, a bad fiance, but they are going to use these tactics of, of, um, of blame shifting, um, name calling, triangulation, uh, the gaslighting, the brainwashing, all these techniques, cognitive dissonance to make you feel scapegoated or there's something wrong with you or your genuineness is something wrong with your wanting a relationship and things to be open and honest and intimate and forthright. Um, they are going to use these tactics to try to make you feel less than um, underneath um, something is wrong with you. You are uh, to feel guilty for some reason, which you have no, uh, there's no uh, validity. I know there's nothing really that you have done to warrant this treatment. You don't deserve this treatment, but they are just going to constantly and incessantly and relentlessly 
project this onto those individuals whom they want to control, um, you know, in their environment. If you've ever seen like one of those puppets um, with the strings, if you've ever seen, you know, um, what's that foosball type of game where you've got the soccer people, you know, and they're kicking here. I mean, they're trying to control everybody's reaction. They're very much in the persona management business. So they're constantly trying to put forth a certain status, a certain appeal of them. Um, you know, they're always into that public face or that um, outer face, that status, that um, I call it basically a veneer. Um, an outward show of how this person is, wants to be treated, but oftentimes they want to be the one, you know, who is the best uh, with the attention, they're the right one, they're the this, they're the that, etc. Um, and they will use a number of different tactics to create self-limiting beliefs in erroneous beliefs within you so you are resultantly disempowered and then feeling like you have done something wrong and that then you constantly want to then alleviate that pain through working harder to please them, satisfy them, be underneath them. So you are then basically sucked into their menagerie of roles and scapegoats and supply and servants and people who can be there for them and just to be there as a support for them. And we're suddenly, you know, basically, um, you know, under underneath. Um, you know, in, in a down state, a degenerative state, a unhappy state, a disempowered state where you can't be yourself. If you are yourself or you have any accomplishments, you have a talent, you have a kindness, you have a generosity, you have a sweetness, you have a patience, um, you have a nice way about you, a soft touch, um, you know, all, all these things which make you you and make you lovable and that you have to give the affection, the you know, everything that you have to give, the B and R, and the things that you believe and can share in, they're going to create a self-limiting belief within you that isn't allowing that to grow. So they're going to try to put, um, you know, the stonewalling, um, they're going to create the confusion, the self-doubt in you, so that you basically are left wondering what is wrong with you. And then, you know, furthermore, because of their negative protection, you are going to constantly try to um, have that locus of control outside of you to try to prevent their outbursts, their rage, and to keep them happy. And that's really the cause and root of the people pleasing process. And, you know, all, and oftentimes, so you are, people then get stuck with viewing life through their eyes rather than your own lot, your own eyes. And you're, you're basically perceiving life through their lies and not living your truth. That's a pretty good statement because that's actually what, it, what is happening there. So they're going to be projecting these things onto you. They're not going to be validating you in a, neg in a positive way. They do it to create and instill those self-limiting beliefs so you will never rise up. You will never present a threat to them if you can be your greatest self, if you can speak your truth, because oftentimes, you know, you would call out their pathological lies, you'd call out their hostility, you'd call out their destructive ways. So they don't ever want to be held accountable or really be challenged for their personality issues. They don't ever want to address it. They don't want to look at it. They don't want to face it. And they will seek to surround themselves with people who are going to validate the mask, who are going to validate the illusion. See, that's who these people want to surround themselves with. But see, they haven't really taken the, a lot of real challenges in life, which is to release judgment, which is to come into humility, which is to come into the humble side of life and to be, cease the judgment and cease the criticism because then you're to open up and then be accepting of people. And so that oftentimes is a challenge to cease the judgment um, and to become open-minded. Um, and there's a statement that says, you know, a um, a um, closed, you know, parachute, you know, is, is not going to save you. And, and the mind is very much the same way. A closed mind um, is really not going to catch you oftentimes when you fall. So you have to be open-minded and you have to be open-minded to others and their gift and their perspective. It doesn't mean everybody, you know, is the same, but to acknowledge that and then to feel secure 
in who you are. And then because with that, nobody can take that away. And so oftentimes that is the lesson with these narcissistic borderline or psychopathic relationships is that they will call into being the healing journey is to call into being your faith in belief in yourself and knowing who you are as an eternal being. And I, I'm not going to get you know political or religious or anything like that, but to be as a person, a human being, think about that. Um, because oftentimes people don't feel like they're their real selves when they're with this person um, or they ha have a hard time coming home to themselves. And that's just a, a um, you know, a, a metaphor, basically feeling, you know, at home um, within themselves and feeling loved for who they are. Basically that freedom that really needs to take place when you're in a relationship or really to, to be your best self and to really know your calling or your talent and to live that. Um, you have to be able to have that part of you engaged, which is alignment really of your body, mind and spirit and to be accepted for who you are and appreciated for who you are and loved for who you are and not just how for how you serve somebody because oftentimes that is the trap that people get stuck in and those create a lot of the issues, the health issues, the emotional, etc. So if you have encountered um, these self-limiting beliefs as a result of this person who has tried to instill these in you, release these now. Uh, let them go. Let go of the self-limiting belief, the I can't, the I'm not lovable. Um, I can never have a, a fun relationship. Um, I can never go anywhere in my life because chances are you're putting all these negative images in front of you that have been instilled from this person. And I talk very much about on this channel about how important it is to realize that the subconscious mind really um, um, is very much motivated and sparked or primed by images. So if you keep replaying these negative images, um, that this hurtful person has put into you and made an imprint on you. It's called conditioning or programming of how you think, feel, behave, and act. And furthermore, when you stay in that, you stay in a rut. And then that mood becomes an identity, you know, over time. So you want to release those negative images. And I know it's hard and I know it's difficult. And I know you're hanging on to the negative images for dear life because this person who had power over you or control over you said it was so and you're trying to fulfill that prophecy for them. So realize that it is so important for you to take the helm, for you to take the driver's seat and for you to surround yourself with positive images, statements, feelings um, around you, you know, of, of happiness, of smiling, of going out and enhancing your life with all the different things and emotions and feelings and bringing those solutions into play. But you can never find those solutions until you really begin to release those self-limiting beliefs and get a more positive image in your environment. And I talk very much in the recovery journal of how important it is to have these positive images up and around and the positive statements. And, you know, to say, I am fulfilling my dreams. I know what my dream is and I am fulfilling them now. Every day, in every way, I'm taking steps to fulfill my dream. And um, having statements out, having affirmations, you know, being getting excited, having enthusiasm, knowing that when you stay with the healing journey long enough that your prayers will be answered. But you have to stay with the healing journey long enough so you begin, you can begin to really receive, uh, receive the results of the healing and it really takes place within you and it, then you become healed and then you say, I am healed. And then you take that healed self out with you into the world and you bring that person into relationships and not the wound, not the open wound that says, you know, hurt me more. Look at my wound. You know, you're not bringing that into attention. You're not bringing that into being. You're because you are healed. And so that is my goal really here in the channel. And um, don't forget to really take that effort. If you think I'm weird, I'm strange by saying affirmations or surrounding myself with positive art, positive images, um, positive statements in my environment. And if you don't take a time, a moment to gaze on them, to let it resonate with you, to allow it to work, then you're not really giving yourself really the advantage that you need. You need to do this bit of work 
If you're not worth it, who is? You need to do these this work, surrounding yourself with the positive images, statements, the things that will really kind of help you to focus on the positive rather than on the hurt. Because that is gonna really prime your subconscious and it's gonna help you focus. It's gonna help draw more of that into your life, your feeling, your thoughts, your behavior, and you're slowly going to regenerate and that your body is going to then regenerate on that feeling and again and again. And when you do it consistently, I know this is turning into a long video here, but when you do it consistently, that'll become part of you. And then it'll become part of you and that'll become more part of you and then it'll become you. And then you'll begin to have that security and that knowingness and be able to trust that inner faith, that inner belief inside, which is in the solar plexus, which is, you know, you know, by the belly button, which is in the seat of the I am, your personal power, the seat of your self-esteem, you begin to have that activated and you bring that in and then you don't give that up to people, um, which is of course what the character disorder uh, person is trying for. It's like they have like a, uh, a knife and they're going for that solar plexus or trying to carve it out and yank it out. Um, so you don't want to allow that to occur and then you want to, you know, and you enforce that through your boundaries and that, that protection and getting that activated. You gotta have to get that primed. You have to get that energized and connected to and then start acting on it. And it will, uh, I know people, viewers have said, well, I don't have a solar plexus. Well, you, yes you do, but maybe it's so muffled, it's so covered over with layers of defense mechanisms that you haven't engaged it. Um, so you have to do that little bit of work and surround yourself with the positive images, the statements, the affirmations, the scents, the um, the music, um, the things that uplift you, empower you, and then you begin to then take action along that path, and then you begin to not only talk the talk, but you walk the walk, and done consistently, those positive moods, repeated again and again, become a new identity. And you have that, and you're keeping that vision in front of you, and you will receive the benefits. Peace and harmony with you here today, helping you to release your self-limiting beliefs. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.